So let's try and make sense of the developments in Russia. They've confused many analysts across the globe. Joining me on the show is Zinia Kondrateva, a senior journalist. She was covering the conflict um, in, in Ukraine. Uh, she joins me from Moscow. Also with me is uh, Prabhat Shukla, former Indian ambassador to Russia. Welcome to both our guests. And Zinia, uh, can you tell us, was this a coup against President Putin? Was this, uh, you know, an attack on General Shoigu, an attempt to get rid of General Shoigu? What's happening in Russia? Uh, hi, Gaurav. Th thank you for having me again. Uh, yeah, there were different um, theories, different labels given to what has happened over the weekend. Uh, in fact, your report missed uh, one important thing that uh, Evgeny Prigozhin uh, made an announcement ab about two, a couple of hours ago, um, stating that um, it was a long announcement, around 11-minute uh, um, voice message, uh, like he always does it. Uh, so he stated uh, the reason why his fighters uh, went on the so-called rebellion is that from July 1, he, the uh, Wagner uh, company, the fighters, uh, would need to sign the contract with the um, um, defense ministry and would need to be subjected to basically to the defense ministry. Yes. So the PMC, the private military company, as we know it, would uh, cease to exist. And that was the basic reason for them to uh, start the march. Um, and that they were attacked by the Russian aviation. They had to shoot back. This is something that we still didn't have comments on from the Minister of Defense, because we know that at least uh, 13 to 15 pilots have died on that yes. day of the Russian army. And Prigozhin stated that around 30 of his uh, fighters have died in the attack. Uh, a lot of statements, but the key is that they did not attempt a coup, that their attack was not, not against the government. They were not trying to replace the government. That's what that's his version of events is. Um, so okay. it's really debatable what's really happening. Um, yeah. But he had raised this, and stay with me, stay with me, Zinia. Uh, Ambassador Shukla, does this then not reflect uh, that the leadership of President Putin failed to amicably resolve this issue because Prigozhin had been raising this issue for quite some time, including with President Putin, that G General Shoigu, the defense minister, insisted that the PMC should report to the defense ministry? Yes, it does. But uh, if I might, I just want to go back to your first question about was it a coup or was it not? Obviously, we can argue about it and we won't know in a hurry. But, you know, the speech that the, what he called the Abrashenia, which is an address to the nation, which uh, Putin made on the night of the 24th, he very clearly, you know, firstly, Putin's grasp of history is very, very good. And he's very fond of drawing parallels. The parallel he drew this time was with 1917. Yes. And he said that we are not going to allow the Tsar, the, the leader, to be overthrown the way it happened in 1917. And therefore, what was a victory turned into a defeat. Now, my understanding is that Putin doesn't use these words loosely. He certainly feared that there was something more serious that was brewing. And I think you can, if you want to understand why, you look at the way the people and the army in Rostov yes. greeted Prigozhin and his guerrillas. They were hugely popular. And they actually waltzed into the army headquarters. Oh, there was no resistance at all. So I, I think it's important to bear in mind that the uh, reading of what was happening, whether Prigozhin intended it or not, is something we can argue about. And Prigozhin has but been very careful you know, about it. Zinia, words. you're right, you're right, Ambassador. Let me also bring in Zinia once again into this conversation. Zinia, uh, sure. many reports say that Prigozhin is the second most popular man in Russia after President Putin. Was there an apprehension he, we, he could become more popular than President Putin? Is, is, is that why he's been banished to Belarus? Well, frankly speaking, 
as speaking as a journalist, I would say this is more of a headline making of, you know, facts or statements. Uh, because I think uh, hardly, even though uh, Prigozhin has become popular uh, during the, uh, what Russia calls a special operation in Ukraine, and he has done, let's not forget, he has also a huge media network, a network of media channels, um, online media, telegram, and so on. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's very debatable whether his popularity would be more than of Mr. Putin, and uh, you know that uh, by all the polls, um, Russian president has always been, uh, has always enjoyed uh, quite a popularity over 70 percent in Russia. So, and it has grown uh, during the past one year. So, I think this is just what uh, next for Wagner you know, forces? Will they continue to fight in Ukraine, or are, is, are they now history? Now it'll just be Russian army operations with no Wagner forces. Xenia, you first, and then Ambassador Xenia. Uh, Sure, right. Uh, this is something uh, yet debatable. Um, there were reports from independent media outlets today, again, unverified reports, uh, that there are uh, base camps being built in Belarus to accommodate around 8,000 uh, Wagner troops. Uh, we don't know how, uh, how you know, true those reports are. Uh, we also don't know from uh, Mr. Prigozhin himself what's happening with Wagner. He said that uh, many fighters agreed to sign the contract with the Ministry of Defense, uh, but he said it's not uh, a majority. So I think this is something we are yet to see.